I'm Annette Insdorf. The first time that I saw Three Colors Blue, I admired the artistry, but I wasn't sure what I felt. The second time, I found it richer, and by the uh, third, fourth, fifth times, especially seeing it as part of the Three Colors trilogy, I was convinced of its mastery. A film lover can appreciate Blue as a standalone film of 1993, or one can embrace Three Colors Blue as merely the first part of a monumental trilogy filled with intertextual resonances. Krzysztof Kieślowski created the trilogy together with co-writer Krzysztof Piesiewicz, his collaborator on the Decalogue, the 10-part masterwork of the late 1980s, loosely based on the Ten Commandments. They assumed that the colors blue, white, red, belonging to the French flag, corresponded to the three aspects of the French Revolution, liberty, equality, fraternity. Only later did they learn that this was not the case, but they kept the colors for the film titles as suggested by producer Marin Karmitz. These ideals are merely points of departure for intimate, contemporary cinematic tales. Although the Polish director said that millions have died in the name of these concepts, he was more interested in how ideals are contradictory to human nature. Bleu redefines liberty into a very personal sphere, namely its tense relationship to love. How free can we ever be if another person has our heart? White is really about inequality, and the fraternity explored in red has less to do with armies than with the complex friendship between a crusty judge and a kind-hearted young woman. Thanks to Marin Karmitz, French money enabled Kishlovsky to shoot blue in Paris, a city where French revolutionary history can still be felt in the streets. For white, Polish co-production funds made Warsaw the perfect place to capture transformation, whether of a country from communism to capitalism, or of a humiliated Polish hairdresser into an avenging business tycoon. And to make red, Kieślowski found the island location of Geneva perfect for the story of a man who has severed vital human ties. As Kieślowski put it, Switzerland leans toward isolation, politically as well as geographically. Now, Kieślowski had collaborated with nine different cinematographers on the 10 segments of the Decalogue, and he used the same strategy of visual differentiation for the trilogy. He reunited with three of his greatest cinematographic collaborators, each shooting one part. The DP of Blue is Slavomir Ijak, whose striking use of filters enhanced a short film about killing and the double life of Veronique. For White, uh, Kieślowski reteamed with Edvard Kwosinski to depict a more prosaic time and place with a reduced visual palette. Piotr Sopocinski, the only cinematographer who shot two Decalogue seg segments, returned for Red, creating haunting visual rhymes within the film, which connect to the other parts of the trilogy. It's hard to believe that all three films were shot between September 92 and May 93. And Bleu was edited in time to premiere the following September at the 1993 Venice Film Festival, where it was named Best Film. Bleu has grown on me and in me, especially after Kieślowski's death in 1996 at the age of 54. While the film is suffused with mourning, it's also profoundly alive in its exploration of liberty. Juliette Binoche plays a woman who tries to live without history or desire, but learns she cannot. Her face is like a canvas on which light plays, whether from a swimming pool 
rain or a dangling mobile in a performance that's always understated, exquisite in its restraint. Although the idea for the trilogy came from Piesiewicz, a lawyer, Blue is closer to poetry than prose. It's intricately structured visually and orally. It introduces key images that accumulate meaning and make us aware of what we cannot see as well as what is revealed. Kishlovsky foregrounds vision. You might notice glass and other reflecting surfaces like the swimming pool or an eyeball or television screens. You might pay attention to circular images like the music notes that Julie writes in blue ink, their round shape visually echoing the beads of the mobile. This is appropriate to a film in which the heroine tries to live with metaphorical blinders. Looking ahead at what is right in front of her, Julie is nevertheless brought back to what is behind her. The splashes of blue combined with music express the return of the repressed, that which Julie must confront sooner or later, whether grief or the need for another human being. This relates to the theme of memory, which weaves throughout Bleu. And this theme is enhanced by scenes of Julie's visits to a nursing home, where her mother does not remember who she is. Speaking of great actresses, how brilliant to cast as the mother, Emmanuelle Riva. Her very presence invokes the film Hiroshima Mon Amour, in which she starred as a woman obsessed with the fear of forgetting. As you probably know, Riva was also the star of Amour, Michael Haneke's Oscar-winning drama of 2012. The characters of Blue are composers, and the score is indeed part of the plot. The music was completed prior to shooting and was thus a pretext, providing inspiration for the images and engendering the action. Prizer's composition enters with the funeral scene and then takes on a ghostly presence, beginning with Julie's recuperation on the terrace of her hospital room. Her closed eyes suddenly snap open when the non-diegetic music is heard. She stares fearfully at the camera, which tracks away from her and then back toward her as Blue enters the frame. The music confers a spiritual presence on the camera movement. When memories surface, Blue expresses Julie's emotional state via bits of music accompanied by blackouts that return to the same shot. By film's end, the music helps create what I call the epiphany scene. Choral voices rise, they, they sing from the epistle to the Corinthians, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, if I have not love, I am nothing. Preisner's music seems to lead the camera through four different locales, unifying the characters, equalizing, forgiving, and suggesting hope. And now, Blue. <laughs> 